I said in the past that I was not going to make a video that's directly targeting feminist frequency and Anita Sarkeesian. Again, I just made a little joke video. And I'm keeping my word since this one is targeting the irrational wiki that has a whole page about her. A day ago, I received a private message from someone who said that I'm just an angry misogynist and that everything that I say about Anita gets destroyed on this page. I really had to cringe hard when I saw that the link was from Rational Wiki. A wiki that was made in response to Conservopedia, it quickly became a social justice warrior and feminist breeding ground. You know an internet site fucked up when they have a freaking page about microaggressions it's real it's not satire they are actually being serious with that shit they also have a page about rape culture and other feminist propaganda in other words everything on this page is incredibly one-sided it's completely subjective and they avoid objectivity in other words, they are just as rational as the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea is democratic. Not to mention that you don't need to read much to fill the smog from the users on said wiki. It's basically the Encyclopedia Dramatica for snobs. The main difference is that Encyclopedia Dramatica is making fun of everyone while Irrational Wiki is only bashing certain people that they don't like. That's the difference. Yeah, so much about their supposed rational viewpoint. But okay, let's look at Anita Sarkeesian's page on the Irrational Wiki. Immediately it said that she is mostly known for being the target of misogynists, anti-feminists and gamer gators who constantly harass her and send her death threats. Yeah, the problem is that Anita and her fans don't know how publicity works. If you are publicly saying dumb things, you won't get a positive response. And Anita then takes all the criticism that she receives and says that it's all harassment. If you look at the video responses on YouTube that she gets, you can see that they don't contain any real threats, they really contain real insults. And the people that actually are saying mean things are actually known for being mean to basically everyone. So it's not a gender or personal thing, because those people are more or less assholes to everybody. Almost everything that she receives from those videos is criticism of her extremely flawed arguments. Since she started making said videos, she hasn't addressed any of the points that her critics made or just completely dismissed them if she actually talked about them. She completely missed the point and refused to actually address them like any rational person would do. She is also refusing public debates with people who don't share her views. The only thing I can remember is her saying on Twitter that those evil men with big fan bases are attacking her without bothering to address their points. I also love that she never mentioned any of the women who criticized her and trust me there are at least a hundred out there who made YouTube videos about her which go from small channels to bigger channels to more known names and so on. I'm sure that they all just have internalized misogyny like feminists like to say. <laughs> yeah, her critics don't hate women. But they do dislike her nitpicking, her active effort in slandering media, her flawed arguments, her straight up lying about certain games, her searching for specific material in games and at the same time ignoring plots, characters, development and so on. She sees what she wants to see in a game, no matter how obscure it is, she will find supposed sexism in a video game. Probably her most ridiculous and laughable attempt is in her latest video in which she talks about freaking bots and how video games supposedly focus on a woman's behind. She more than obviously doesn't understand how third person games work. 
considering she basically implies that those games are created so that a woman's ass can be in the center of the screen. Actually, Anita, in those games, the character's shoulders and upper back are in the center. The butt just so happens to be right under it. I mean, come on, are you t thinking that game developers will actually take humans and remove a part of their body because you don't like it? The game doesn't focus on women showing their butts to the players, you fucking moron. She is basically complaining to mother nature for giving humans such an autonomy. Then she makes ridiculous attempts at saying that you can't generally look at a man's butt in games because those are most of the time covered by capes, coats and so on and in some cases you cannot see them because they show only the back. First of all, the vast majority of third person shooters don't show almost the entire body. It also depends on certain missions of certain games. Um, in Hitman Absolution that I currently play, in some missions you can actually see almost his entire body, only his lower legs you cannot see. If you want to see his ass, you can see it in m most missions. In a few you can only see his back. It depends, but game creators don't make games so that they can show off a character's butt. And yeah, she also made a ridiculous comparison between Lara Croft and the guy from Watch Dogs. First of all, she completely ignored how the female characters are dressed in Watch Dogs, because then she wouldn't have an argument. And picking Batman as an example for the male capes is also stupid, because his design is an adaptation from a comic book. If you wanted to see his butt, you can also change in said game, uh, his outfit to the Batman Beyond outfit, which is actually very similar to the Catwoman outfit and it doesn't have a cape. So you can stare at his butt for all day if you wish. Not to mention the countless male superheroes who don't have a cape and you can see their butts in every kind of media, from movies to video games. And she also bashed Catwoman who is in total control of her sexuality, is purposely provocative and knows how to use that for her advantage. But nope, she is just a sexual object, even though when you control her, her body is moved to the side and because of that her butt is not in the center but in the corner. So her argument once again is flawed. And of course she also mentioned Laura Croft. Sorry to break it to you Anita, but her butt? quite pales in comparison to her bust, which was in the early games quite exaggerated and is today quite laughable because her breasts look like a triangle, they are unnatural. People these days are actually making fun of that. But that basically goes for almost every game because back then you have to realize that games in 2016 and games from 1996 are quite different. Characters were also designed differently back then compared to now. And also Anita. How many guys do you see in real life who are so buff that they could be mistaken for a gorilla? Yeah, Anita completely fails to see that male characters are also designed in a way to make them attractive. That's not just a video game thing, but also a thing in every media. And I definitely think of making a video one day to address this point because it's simply ridiculous how blind these feminists are. They just see women and completely ignore men. Even though it's basically the same thing. Also, I always laugh when she mentions Lollipop Chainsaw, a game whose purpose is to be as ridiculous as possible in every aspect, which is why it's so overly sexualized. It's like picking films like The Hottie and the Naughty Showgirls and other ridiculously bad examples to prove a point. Sometimes going for the lowest hanging fruit is not a good decision.
But then again, people who actually play video games don't watch her videos, which is why she can successfully fool only people who have no clue about video games. Also, half of the games she bashed were both critical and commercial failures, which proves that if a game is shit, a few bots won't make it successful, making her entire video more or less pointless. She unintentionally proved herself wrong. The main problem with the whole feminist frequency channel and Anita is that she acquires evidence after perspective, not perspective after evidence. She makes active efforts to push her agenda and to slander games. That's not how you do it. That is very, very, very flawed criticism. Sorry for going slightly off topic, but I just had to get her latest video out of my system because you have to see it to believe it. But no, actually no. Watch people make a live stream of that video. Don't give her views because she doesn't deserve a single view. <sighs> yeah, that video was definitely half a million dollars well spent. Anyway, let's continue with Irrational Wiki. Oh boy, I'll try not to roll my eyes too much, so let's begin. I'm going to skip Anita's personal background because it's irrelevant and probably the least biased part of the whole page. Her history of vlogging is also quite vague, and I actually do agree with Irrational Wiki that most of the things here are so obvious that you don't need Sarkeesian to see their flaws. You just need some common sense. So we can continue with her ever so infamous Kickstarter project, Tropes vs. Women. And of course that Sirius gets attacked by angry MRAs, especially Thunderfoot, who posted a series of responses. Okay, Irrational VK. Breathe in and calm down. You can either be a wiki page or an angry Tumblr vlog. Please pick one. Also, just because someone criticizes Anita doesn't mean that said person is an MRA. I don't like her work and I'm not an MRA or a Mekta or any kind of those movements. So stop pulling a straw man. Yeah, I did that what Anita always does. <laughs> The page continues with Anita basically talking about how sexist toys are and that they promote gender roles. I will just say one thing. Let each kid decide with what they want to play. If they want to play with a doll, fine. If they want to play with Legos, fine. If they want a stuffed animal, Fine, every kid is different and they have their preferences, some of which are way more common with one gender than with the other one. That's nothing new and there have also been studies which show what everybody already knew, that boys and girls have for the most part different preferences when it comes to toys. So it kind of makes sense that the companies would target a certain gender with certain toys. This and last time I checked, adults are buying kids toys and it's up to them to decide what their kid gets. If the consumers don't want their products, the company won't succeed. You cannot blame the company for selling what people want to buy. And that goes for any kind of product. Next is again whining about her harassment. It happens to everyone. No matter how hard you try, there are always going to be people who are easily offended and write negative comments about you. Also, there are always trolls who on purpose want to get a reaction from you and write stuff that they don't actually mean. I have been on YouTube now for 10 years. In those 10 years, people have said really insulting things to me. People say that they want to see me dead. I haven't gotten any rape threats because the men normally don't get them because they are kind of laughable when this, you say that to a man, but okay. People say that they wish I would die of cancer. People say that they hope that my house burns down and that I and my entire family die. And 
So on, there have been people who stalked my every movement on YouTube and a few other internet sites for several months, one even for almost two years. Maybe that person is still stalking my channel, I don't know. Yeah, people try to dox me. Yeah, men also receive lots of that stuff. Frankly, the latest statistics show that men receive it more often than women, and said statistics also show that they normally don't take any action and ignore it. Which also kind of makes sense because most people don't take this stuff seriously if it happens to a man. And guess what? I'm still alive and nothing happened. The vast majority of things I received was just angry text on my computer screen. I don't get where this fear comes from, but they are basically saying that a few mean tweets and YouTube comments are the same as a group of people standing in front of your house with torches and saying that they want to kill you. It's not the same, you fucking moron. And you have to be completely paranoid to even think that, seriously. There is no excuse for anyone to ignore valid criticism, and that's the problem with Anita and several other critics. I'm quite sure that she doesn't get upset over mean tweets from trolls and angry pretends, because most of the time they are laughable. They are re really poorly written and you can see that that person is just angry and that there's nothing to that comment except angry text. It has no valid criticism. So it's ridiculous that she basically takes those comments and combines them with criticism and says that both are harassment. They are not. It's the same thing as she did with the big YouTubers that I already mentioned, where she said that they are sending their fan bases after her instead of addressing their valid criticism. This is why I cannot respect her as a critic. I cannot simply respect her. And not only that, but she also doesn't allow people to thumb up or thumb down her videos or comment. I cannot respect such a person. And nobody should respect a supposed critic that cannot take criticism. It's ridiculous. Also, from what I have seen back in the day when she was taking screenshots of said harassments, they almost always came from those egg accounts on Twitter. And uh, said accounts had no other activity since they were created and they were deleted immediately as soon as um, she posted the screenshot. Yeah, something tells me that those accounts are kind of fishy. That they can be basically created by her fans, by herself, and that they are more or less just troll accounts. Otherwise, they would have had some other activity. And after people started saying that she is sending uh, those uh, harassing tweets to herself, she one of a sudden stopped posting them on her timeline. Not suspicious at all. And another reason why I don't buy um, her claims that she her life is at a serious risk is if she actually contacted the police and was following their advice. She wouldn't make public appearances. She would keep a low profile. She would basically kind of stay out of the spotlight for a while because, you know, threats of an actual danger. Yeah, the police advise all of that if you contact them. And she still makes public appearances even though her safety is endangered, apparently. Yeah. And also one thing, one of the said harassments and death threats on uh, Twitter was how much I know really taken out of proportion when she posted it, it was this one. And this was more than obviously a fake account. There are several things wrong with this that uh, I will explain now. First of all, when you look at this, it's not signed in, there's nothing in the search bar, so the person would either have to have a direct link to a said account to take the screenshot, or actually post the stuff on this account, log out, 
and then take the screenshots. I think the latter is the case because the last tweet was taken just 12 freaking seconds after the screenshot. 12 fucking seconds. And the supposed uh, threats are just so ridiculous, so over the top. I'm sorry, I don't believe that an actual person wrote this. This was either written by one of her fans or Anita herself. Bottom of the line, actual threats should be taken seriously. But most of the things that I saw weren't actual threats. They weren't. Don't use supposed harassing tweets and supposed death threats as an excuse to stifle criticism of people that disagree with you. <sighs> okay, that being said, let's look through this bias excuse of a wiki page to see what else is there. Oh, the beat up Anita game. You know how many people's faces have already been in those games, countless celebrities, countless politicians, it's one of the risks of becoming a public figure. People didn't care when Paris Hilton's face was put in those games. People didn't care when Justin Bieber's face was in such a game. People didn't care when Angela Merkel, Hillary Clinton, Bush and Obama were in such games. But no, when Anita's face was put in one of those games, and you could virtually smack her, you could hit her, I don't know, I haven't played it and it got removed, I think in like a day or two, then one of a sudden, the whole internet goes crazy and that's a big problem. And again, this is no excuse for ignoring actual criticism, because said games have no critical value and are mostly played by preteens. You cannot compare such a game to a person who actually says why they think that Anita's arguments are incredibly flawed. They are not the same thing. Her Wikipedia was also vandalized and oh no, never happened to anyone else, ever. And it only took the admin of the page just like one click to change it back. Big fucking deal, again. No excuse to avoid actual criticism. Okay, more whining about mean online comments and of course exaggerations after exaggerations. I highly doubt that she received millions of insulting comments because she is one of those critics that disables comments and ratings on her YouTube video. So people have to go out of their way to uh, make a Twitter account and basically reply to her on Twitter and she is notorious there to block everybody that opposes her views. And not just trolls, but also people who call her out on her bullshit. So yeah, next we get the mention of the accusations that she used 4chan to provoke a reaction. Of course, the irrational wiki immediately dismissed this as victim blaming, but at least they write that this stuff is hard to prove. There are screenshots out there that show when her project was posted on 4chan, many people are sure that she was the one who posted it on 4chan herself. We don't know if she did it or not, and only Anita herself knows that. But we do know that she knew 4chan way before the unexpected attack on her happened. Because she had uh, seminars before that and after what happened and the things she said are contradicting. And said videos that include those seminars are in the description. As I already said, several very fishy things that are connected to Anita have happened. The internet is such a place where you can choose to reveal who you are or say anonymous. So it's easy to fake things and to destroy evidence. But it also depends on which site you do that. On some sites you cannot do that successfully, on others you can do that very successfully. But she did post things on her Twitter that can be seen as provocative. Like using a tragedy to blame the gender she dislikes and to promote her agenda. Yeah, I do think that people have the right to disagree with her on that.
I'm going to glance over the mirror's edge catalyst. It's ridiculous that so much is written about a stupid blog and petition from some anonymous user. Seriously, the harassment category is shorter than this and people just talk about the harassment. This was, I think, a short thing that lived for a while until the um, EA dismissed the whole thing and the petition was closed and nobody talks about this. But I do think that's mainly because um, this is basically the entire thing on the whole page that you can actually prove without saying half-truths and twists around facts and evidence. But then again, that's nothing new when it comes to Irrational Weekend. Anyway, thank the lord the next thing about Gamergate only mentions two supposed bomb threats and not more because otherwise this video would have been like three hours long. And no, I didn't bother checking their Gamergate page because I'm sure that I would get a migraine just by looking at it. I probably wouldn't be surprised if they are going to say such bush bullshit as Gamergators and video game players in general are like Trump supporters and right winged and such stupid things. Because that's what people like this do. They generalize things and get offended if somebody else generalizes them. So no, I'm not going to bother looking up that page. And absolutely there is no fucking way I'm going to make a video about said page like I did with this one. It's just a one-time thing and I don't plan to make any other video about Irrational Wiki ever. The first part talks about a bomb thread that was received over an email which nobody bought. Yeah, which bomber would be so stupid to announce their attack? I mean, come on. Then Zoe Quinn is mentioned and they claim that she also got false allegations, which is um, for the most part bullshit. You have tons of evidence on the internet that show how corrupt she is and the journalist she was involved with, and she hasn't been relevant in a very long time. The only thing in the, a few months back when she became slightly relevant is when she had that speech with Anita at the UN, which was so horrible that the UN now pretends that it never happened. And yeah, Zoe Queen is basically irrelevant, but there's a link in the description where you can basically see the whole thing and um, yeah, see the supposed false allegations from her own accounts. So let's move on. Next is about another bomb thread, this time where she was uh, sheltered to speak at a university. The bomb thread was more than obviously written by a feminist because it's so ridiculous that there is no fucking way that this could be real or written by anybody else. First, no fucking shooter is going to announce their fucking attack to the staff at the university. People who think that have been watching way too many Hollywood films. Second, they are not going to brag about which weapons they will bring. This would be too ridiculous even for Hollywood action films. Then you get the rest of the announcement. I have the whole announcement here, so let's just read. You have 24 hours to cancel Sarkeesian's talk. You might be foolish enough to just beef up security at the event, but that won't save you. Even if you, they're able to stop me, there are plenty of feminists on campus who won't be able to defend themselves. Yeah, th things like that. One way or another, I'm going to make sure they die. You've probably heard of a man named Mark Lepine. Lepine. I have absolutely no clue how to pronounce his last name. And frankly, I don't care. He was a hero to men everywhere for standing up to the toxic influence of feminism on Western masculinity. We live in a nation of emasculated cowards, too afraid to challenge the vile misandrist harpies who seek to destroy them. Feminism has taken over every facet of our society, and women like Sarkeesian want to punish us for even fantasizing about being men. 
This is why I've cho chosen to target her. Anita Sarkeesian is everything wrong with the feminist woman. And she is going to die screaming like the craven little whore that she is if you let her come to you the university. I will write her manifesto in her spilled blood. I mean, seriously. Who should take this seriously? And you will all bear witness to what feminist lies and poison have uh, done to the men of America. I am a student here. You will never find me, but you may also know my name. Feminists have ruined my life and I will have my revenge for my sake and the sake of all the others they've wronged. You have 24 hours, use them well. Yeah, and above that he is saying, I have at my disposal a semi-automatic rifle, multiple pistols and a collection of pipe bombs. This will be the deadliest school shooting in American history and I am giving you a chance to stop it. This looks like something that an angry 11 year old would write. It also bothers me that Mark Lepine is mentioned because he is relatively unknown. And at that time another shooter was quite notorious, Elliot Rogers, who was all over the media known as the guy who killed because he hated women. Which isn't quite true because a big problem with him was also social rejection. So when he snapped, nobody was safe around him and in the end he killed more men than women. But the media of course had to say that he only hated women and that's why he killed. Half truths again. But anyway, the police read this and said that there was no danger because everybody can see that this is complete bullshit. This is something that a troll would write. And Anita still refused to have her stupid speech. And of course, the media talked big about this yet again, and Gamergrad was once again blamed, and yada yada yada. And Anita received a lot of uh, support for this. And actually, a lot of people gave her money because of this incident. In all honesty, I wouldn't be surprised if this announcement came from Anita because she is the only one who benefits from this. Everybody would lose from this. Why would people from Gamergate even write that? The only people that use the Gamergate hashtag and would write something like this are trolls or feminists that just pretend to be people from the Gamergate movement. And there have been plenty of those because that's what will happen when you have a movement that's not organized. Everybody can be part of it. Even if phonies, they just need to tweet hashtag Gamergate and they can write whatever shit they want. Whatever. It also says that Anita is from now on with an armed escort when she goes to the, the public. So much so that she came uninvited to a party hosted by the creator of Minecraft. Which makes me think that she is not that terrified and concerned about her safety, otherwise she wouldn't have shown up there. But anyway. Next we got Anita's reaction. It mentions that she doesn't want criticism, which is why she disables ratings as well as comments. Probably because otherwise this is how stuff under her video would look like. A shitload of dislikes and plenty of comments from people that disagree with her. Granted there are troll comments in there, but the vast majority of people don't write insulting stuff. Except if you count disagreeing and pointing out your hypocrisy as an insult. Which is actually a problem with social justice warriors because they consider everything that they don't like as an insult. Regardless if it's even true, they don't like it, it has to be changed. Then it says she made once an experiment in which she noticed that a hundred people disliked her video before they could completely watch it. First of all, every bigger YouTuber has this problem. Go watch their videos as soon as they are posted. Like in the first minute, there are already with almost every bigger YouTuber 
at least a hundred dislikes. And that goes also for YouTubers that aren't even controversial. Big fucking deal. So you basically are saying that you are going to censor everybody because a few people didn't like you. Logic of the year. Second, you don't need to watch the entire video to know if you like it or dislike it. If people watch the first five minutes of your video and they really hate it, how high are the chances that they will change their opinions and like the remaining 20 minutes of your video? If they want to criticize you, yes, then they have to watch the entire video. But to decide if they like or dislike said video, I don't see why people would have to watch the entire video, especially if it's a very long video. Take for example food. You take the first bite and it's so disgusting that you want to throw up. Do you want to continue? No. And also a reverse thing happens. Bigger YouTubers and even more controversial YouTubers like Anita have a lot of people that are I call yes people. The same people also wrote this fucking page. Who basically like and favorite everything what said YouTuber does. Without even closely paying attention to their content. They are right regardless of what they say. It goes both ways. And I highly doubt that this will ever change. But this is how people are. They just want to have good things and want to get rid of everything they don't like. Because feelings. This is the end of the first part of my video. Because it would be way too long if I made an entire video with all of what I have to say. But look at the bright side. This is what I'm going to go after in my second video. I will dissect every one of those supposed flawed criticisms of Anita. And trust me, most of them are laughably bad. Which is easily the most cringeworthy part of the entire page.